God speaks in parables. God speaks in parables in the Old Testament. In Psalms chapter 78 verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings of old. Jesus Christ expressed his words in parables in Mark chapter 4 verse 34. But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. How does God speak to the people through the Holy Bible? It is obvious that the Bible is written in English to the Americans and British, Spaniel to the Spaniards, Tagalog to the Filipinos, and so on and so forth. Since God expresses His words in the language or dialect of the Bible believers, is it not presumed that they can understand it? Obviously, they enjoy reading the story and the moral lessons they learn from it. How come theologians, Bible scholars, priests, pastors, and ministers teaching the Holy Bible cannot agree? What is the result? We are all witnesses that now Christianity is divided into sects and denominations. At the latest count, this add up to more than 3,000 groups and each claims the truth. All of these are obsessed to reach heaven. Question again. Does this condition of Christianity find resemblance in the Old Testament? Exactly. This is what is read in Genesis chapter 11 when the people constructed the Tower of Babel. Genesis 11 verse 4, they said, Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And God did not want what they were doing. So in Genesis 11 verse 5, And the Lord came down in 11 verse 7, And there confounded their language, and they may not understand one another's speech. Do not professing Christians read the story of the Tower of Babel and warn of the lesson from this sad story? Very clear. This is what Jesus Christ saw in his time. Spiritual blindness all around. And so he told his listeners. Luke chapter 6 verse 39 and I quote, And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? And when he was his disciples, he told them in Matthew 15 verse 14, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Can we all see this similar statement of God? In constructing the Tower of Babel, in Genesis 11 verse 5, and the Lord came down, in verse 7, and there confounded their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. In Luke 12, 51, Suppose she that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. What caused theologians, Bible scholars, preachers, priests, pastors, and ministers to speak different things about the word of God? While they read the following, they either ignore or do not believe what Jesus Christ revealed to John, the beloved apostle, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, I quote, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? In verse 3, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. In verse 4, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Lastly, in verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Is not this book related to what Mark wrote about how Jesus Christ spoke to the people? In Mark chapter 4 verse 34, But without a parable, 
spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Exactly. What Mark wrote is what the angel told John as he was exiled in the island of Patmos, that no one can open the book referring to the Bible, but only Jesus Christ. This means only Christ can reveal the intended or spiritual message thereof, because what it is written, his words are expressed in parables or God is speaking in tongues. And for Jesus Christ to reveal the message to the chosen, in his role as the Father in the flesh, he promised his disciples in John chapter 14 verse 18 to come back again and in Matthew 20, 20 to be with them till the end of the world. This is what Mark meant when he wrote, When they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Further emphasizing, John wrote in 1 John chapter 2 verse 27, But the anointing which you have received of him, abide that in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. If Christ alone can open this book or the Bible, why do we hear pastors, priests, and ministers preach the word and many people are benefiting from it? Yes. What you said is written in the following in Matthew 5.45 That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Obviously, people can read the Holy Bible, but no doubt they are limited to the letter or literal meaning of the word. What is the purpose of God? in allowing this exception for people to open and read this book or the Bible. The reason is for people to learn moral lessons in order to instill peace and order while living on earth. Let us remember, God is still in the process of building His eternal kingdom. Are the people aware of this limited privilege of opening this book or the Bible? Of course, they are not aware that Jesus Christ called the attention of the religious leaders. We all hear rebuking them so that their eyes will be opened to this incomplete benefit. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 20 example, we can read, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. This benefit, for righteousness lasts only up to the grave or while people are living on earth. Still, it is not clear to me why God has to limit the benefit from reading the Holy Bible. Is not God love as I read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16? And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in Him. Because of spiritual blindness, people cannot see that God is harvesting the soul and not the body of men. What must be the term for this limited benefit that people may become aware of this? With morality, unwittingly, people have this wrong notion of entering the kingdom of God. Therefore, this may well be termed religiosity to distinguish it from spirituality. It is still not clear to me the distinction between religiosity and spirituality. Did Jesus Christ call the attention of the people on this? Yes, our Lord emphasized this to the very religious leaders in Matthew 23 verse 25. I will quote, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. And then in verse 26, he continued, Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Perhaps with this clarification of God, we could see why Apostle John cried when he saw 
no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon further with this in widens our view how God sees all religions established by men that only teach morality leading to religiosity underscore this in Proverbs 14 verse 12 there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death well then what is the reason of God for limiting the people access to the deeper meaning of the words in the Holy Bible since the cause of the fall of Lucifer is pride God wants us to humble ourselves that we may be endowed with divine knowledge and wisdom since Old Testament time this has been the counsel of God to the people like in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 I quote whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are win from the milk and drawn from the breasts jesus christ himself told his listeners in luke chapter 10 verse 21 i quote i thank thee o father lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so father for so it seems good in thy sight to further emphasize the importance of humility paul wrote in second timothy chapter 3 verse 15 and I quote, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. If the Holy Bible is, is expressed in the tongue of God and translated in the language of man, how could God now establish his relationship with man? There is therefore no recourse but to depend fully to the explanation of God. Right at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ, He demonstrated this when He drove the merchants in the temple. Before the people who witnessed this incident, in John chapter 2, verse 19, Jesus said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Let us look how the Jews understood the word temple and the consequence thereof. In verse 20, then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? As Jesus was nailed on the cross, this is what we heard from the Jews in Matthew 27 verse 39. And they that passed by reviled him, waging their heads, and in verse 40, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. But to his disciples, for relying from his intended meaning for temple. In John chapter 2 verse 21, But he spake of the temple of his body. And in verse 22, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Have we noted? The consequence of relying on human wisdom for the meaning of the word of God? These people did not believe the scripture and what Jesus had said. Can you give me some examples that I may be convinced that indeed human wisdom is not capable of comprehending the intended message of God? Example for water it has several references. First reference for water symbolizes the word of God. In Ephesians 5.26, I quote that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Second reference for water, it symbolizes the Holy Spirit. John 7.38 and 39, I quote, He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Third, reference for water, it symbolizes man himself. In Psalm 22 verse 14, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Plus several more. Example, for a tree, it has several references. 
First reference for tree, it symbolizes man. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. Psalm 52 verse 8, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. Second reference for tree, it symbolizes the Spirit of God. Revelation 22 verse 14, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Third reference for tree, it symbolizes the physical life of man. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, Tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Fourth reference for tree, it symbolizes the attributes of the soul. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Example, for leaven, it symbolizes wrong doctrines. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew 16 verse 12, they understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Example for fasting, it has the following symbolism. First reference for fasting, not hunger for bread, but for the word of God. When Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Second reference for fasting, To abhor wickedness, so as to help attain freedom from spiritual bondage or bondages. In Isaiah 58 verse 6, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke. Example, for mountains, it symbolizes people. Judges chapter 9 verse 36. Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. Example, for sea or ocean, it symbolizes the way of the Lord or the right spiritual path. Psalm 77 verse 19. The way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Who can decipher the following? The theologians, Bible scholars, bishop, priests, pastors, or teachers of the Bible? Judges 9.8 The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Rain thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness? Wherewith by me they honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And in the following, And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou, and rain over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness, and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. God's divine revelation for this parable will completely and surely dismantle or break down the pastoral system of the Christian religion. The foregoing is but an introduction of God to convince people that, indeed, His words in the Holy Bible are all expressed in parables. Only by divine revelation to the babes, little children, or the poor in spirit will God reveal the wonderful message for His glory. The letter of the word is for the natural man in 1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, 
for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Human wisdom is limited to the literal meaning of the word of God. Unwittingly, therefore, what is written is perceived to be a part of history, and the incidents happen in specific places. Hence, with this belief, they per pertain to certain personalities and particular group of people. Therefore, for us to know the letter of the word simply serves as basis for God to reveal His intended message. The letter of the word cannot be presumed having occurred or happened physically unless divinely revealed. The letter of the word is the basis of scientists in discrediting the Holy Bible for they are the leading exponents of human wisdom. The letter of the word produced atheists and agnostics for the glory of Satan who is the arch enemy of God. Now the following distinguishes the true from the false ministers of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Will the natural man accept the following truth? In John 6, 63, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Sad to state, different interpretations of the Bible cause the Christian religion to be divided into sects and denominations. However, since God is represented by His words, and He is immutable and does not change, therefore the intended message must be true all the time. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was true yesterday must be true today, and also true in the future. On the other hand, what is written erroneously perceived to happen in the future is actually happening today and had happened in the past. A classic example for this is written in the book of Revelation, for the chosen few of God. Colossians 1.26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. A prophecy is fulfilled. And the visions of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Isaiah 29 verse 11. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this. And he saith, I am not learned. Verse 12 of Isaiah chapter 29. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near with me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Isaiah 29, 13-14 Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. I would like to thank all of you for listening to this broadcast. Our prayer is that God shine His face on you all, and as He reveal Himself, you will open your spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit is saying.